this is Peter at Retro Fret in Brooklyn, New York, talking a little bit about how you play a banjo ukulele, how you, what the chord forms are on it. Basically, it's exactly the same as a ukulele. So if you're a ukulele player, all you have to do is pick it up and all of the forms you already know are exactly the same. If you're a guitar player, it gets a little more complicated, but think of it as a guitar capoed at the fifth fret and your two bass strings are missing. So what you know is a D chord works perfectly well here as a G chord, because again, you're a fourth up higher on the neck, you're capoed up the neck. So a one, four, five in the key of G would look like this. It's a ukulele scale neck with what would have originally been gut strings mounted to a small banjo rim. You gotta get the strum going if you're not used to that. Looks like this, get all your fingers moving and go. Except the sound is much louder and more obnoxious. So if ukulele players, if you're tired of getting drowned out by your band, this could be your solution. But uh, most of these were pretty cheap. This is actually a very expensive, very fancy one. This cost about 50 bucks in uh, 1925. So that was a pretty serious banjo ukulele. But uh, people would take them away to camp or take them away uh, you know, on trips and it was considered the novelty instrument. Everyone had to have one in college. If you went away to college, you had to have a banjo uke. Often they show up with signatures of everyone in the frat on the head. Um, but they're still fun today. You can still find, uh, find a lot of them. And if you're a ukulele player or even a guitar player, it's, a, it's an entertaining way to annoy your neighbors and or bandmates. This little introduction on playing the banjo ukulele, it's a lot of fun. You can't play sad music on this, kids. You have to be happy. It's about the only way it works. You can be a little winsome, but that's about it. Otherwise, music to enjoy. Music to enjoy.